getting a place like this and trying to put all the pieces together for a business like this is fucking impressive, dude. In another country in a language you don't speak. Like what? <laughs> yeah. Like if you could get this in Phoenix, you wouldn't be here. Right. You know, and it's the same for the cancer patients and the autoimmune patients. If they could get the care that they needed in the United States, then there'd be no reason to be here. Welcome to the CPI podcast. Uh, I'm I'm missing my co-pilot here today, Ed Clay, but he said he was sorry he couldn't be here to hang out with you guys, big fans, and uh, he wanted to be here. And um, I got some really cool people with me here today. This is really cool. Tim Welsh, Sugar Sean, welcome you guys. Thanks for coming down to CPI. And uh, man, I've had a great time already hanging out with you guys. So. Dude, it's, it's been, been awesome so far. I mean, the whole staff, the hospital you got going on, the dinner you took us to last night, like we're definitely going to come back. It's been fucking awesome for us. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to, uh, you know, have you guys back. And we were just talking about like, man, I, I checked in on your Rogan podcast again. Shout out to Rogan for giving us so many shout outs lately. And, um, you know, now that I've got to meet you, I've always been a fan, man. It's been really cool watching you come up, you know, fight of your life that you just yeah. came off of, too. But um Man, I just I noticed a lot of cool stuff between kind of like my, my growing up and coming up into martial arts and like how you have to and like figuring out meditation and figuring out weed and yeah. figuring out some of these uh, things, you know, and um, man, tell, tell us a little bit, you know, about that, like just how how much you evolved here just even in the last since that show was four years ago. And, and yeah, uh, I, it's crazy how fighting kind of brought us to learning about being healthy. And it's, Cause it's not really taught in school, obviously. Like our parents have no idea how to be healthy. They're kind, now that they're starting to be like, have to go to the doctor and then find out all the shit that's wrong with them. They're starting to go like become a little bit more healthy, but it was really through fighting that I was like, learned how to eat healthy. Cause I want to perform better. I have all this inflammation in my back. I'm like, Oh, you know what, 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 what's a food that is anti-inflammatory like blueberries and spinach. So we started making shakes. That's when we kind of, we started eating healthy. Then we started like thinking, how can, how can we just get a, and fighting is just those little advantages that that can win win or lose a fight. So we started, you know, learning about meditation. I think I think Tim can talk about it more because he broke his jaw and he started listening to Sam Harris. I think right, he started yeah. listening to Sam Harris and uh, started meditating. Kept telling me about it. I started it, and I meditation. It's not, and I and when I talk about it, I feel like people think like, oh, you just like sit there for hours or whatever. But it's literally just finding. 10 minutes throughout the day. I do it every morning for 10 minutes. Throw it on 10% Happier, Waking Up app. You can Google our YouTube, like 10 minute morning meditation, a guided one. And uh, just finding it throughout the day, that's really, I feel like it's changed my life completely. How I how I have interactions with people, how I even just, my perspective on things. Um, so eating um, and then meditation and sleeping, which I learned from the Rogan podcast like when he had Matthew Walker on. There's another one Tim sent me. He's like, don't listen to this unless you want to like, f like get fucked up about your sleep. And I was like, God. So I listened to it. Completely changed my life. Um, but yeah, that all came from fighting, wanting to improve and just be a better fighter, which in turn made me just better human, feel better. Yeah. yeah. And then we found a guy named Paul Check and yep. did some of his courses. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's like this yeah. uh, holistic nutritionist guy and he has like courses and stuff. And we started learning about the cold plunge and and then just reading and just like fighting is just so much like probably 90 percent mental especially mm. especially under the like under the big lights and on the big stage and the meditation and all that the healthy stuff is i don't know really fucking enjoy it um yeah 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 it's you know that's one of the things like a couple of things i always loved about martial arts you know so um you know, when I got into jiu-jitsu in 1995, I would like literally try to drag everyone to the mat. You know what I mean? You gotta come try this stuff. You gotta come try this stuff. And it was a lot different back then. Yeah. It was a little more, a little more violent, you know? Like we were fighting, fighting, you know? It was, it was like jujitsu was like your entry level into Valley Tudo. It wasn't right. even called MMA yet. And, um, but what I always loved is that if I could get someone to stick with it for a little while, how much it changed their life. It didn't matter what you had going. You know, you're, you're depressed, you're getting bullied, you're overweight, you're not confident, you're on drugs, you know, like whatever those things were that were going, you didn't have friends, you know, going on in your life that if we could get people into the gym and you get them training, um, like you're saying, like you start when you get into it, you want that little extra step. Mm -hmm. You want that little thing. And and we start looking to people like Joe Rogan and and uh, different things that are out there to uh, really, um, really improve. 
And uh, I feel like one of the best things that we have here with, you know, Chips a Hospital with the cancer and autoimmune, but also with Cellular Performance Institute is that when I can get people down here, you know, like it, it gives them another little extra step, a little thing to get better. You know, if your knees working better, your shoulders working better, your training better, your cardio, uh, you know, gets better. And um, I just really see it as like another involvement to like supporting people into you know, improving their lives. Yeah. Well, recovery for me throughout the years um has been like went from like not super important to like number one recovery and i'm talking about like that's sleep and diet again too but just stretching cold plunge sauna um all that work is so important and it's super it's still even like you'd be surprised some of the ufc fighters just athletes in general that have just shitty recovery yeah. it's 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 uh it's pretty crazy but for my last fight obviously i fought peter yawn took more damage than i've probably ever taken in a fight head damage uh definitely got punched a couple times had lingering a little bit of lingering headache so i'm super excited to try the the chamber i yeah. think i'm doing that after this the hyperbaric chamber um so what do i sit in there for an hour and just get extra oxygenated basically I'm super oxygenated yeah you're gonna sit in there for an hour uh, we have a huge one. It can go mm. as deep as any tank can. Like it could be used for like the bends for divers and stuff. You know, again, like a lot of what we do here was actually originally set up for the cancer patients. And that just really helps athletes and, and normal people like you. So yeah, you'll be sitting in the chamber. It's huge. You can lay down. It's actually an eight person, but at most, like maybe you get four people in there, but we usually keep it at two or three so you can lay down. Uh, you'll be wearing a mask, you know, and you'll be breathing in the pure oxygen, but that pressurized oxygen and it pushes oxygen deeper into your cells and into parts of your body that normally don't have a lot of oxygen in them. So super good for the brain. Uh, it's used a lot to treat people with uh, post-traumatic stress order, uh, P, you know, PTSD, traumatic brain injuries. Um, we just had Ian the Hurricane down here. You know, uh, we did uh, interthecal stem cells up his spinal cord for mm -hmm. him. And uh, his brain mapping that he's getting, because he had a really bad concussion, yeah. it's like amazing the differences uh, that it's doing for him. So we've been having him come back down multiple times and getting new brain scans every time so that we have that data. You yeah. know, it's one thing if people say, oh, I feel better, right? Yeah. Which is great, but like we want the proof, science. you know? And we want the science, you yeah. know, just, just like a fight. You, know, you wanna know who's really better? You gotta actually fight, you yeah. know? Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome though. Like you have, have the staff here cooking. so. Because all the meals you've been feeding us have been quality, good Ooh. organic, mm -hmm. bomb meals, the layered creamer and the coffee, just everything's just so quality. So you have those same meals for the cancer patients that are staying? It's a little bit different, you know? So like each cancer patient has a, a specific nutritional diet that they're doing. Mm. Most of them, it's based on what's called the Gerson diet, Dr. Max Gerson, and it's a vegan diet. But everything that we have here is all organic. Uh, you know, those juices that you're getting, are they're unbelievable. Our cancer patients, you know, know drink up to 13 8 to 13 of those a day wow because we, you know most people we come down here even stem cell patients they're malnourished yeah you know and that's why we also do the myers cocktail iv for some of our patients that come down here you know and uh give them that because if we're going to give them stem cells they have to be able to have uh all the vitamins and minerals that they that they need so yeah that's so important having yeah. that having those minerals to be able to like ab absorb the, the the stem cells and all the the good stuff you're injecting you into need them. the raw materials yeah and that's mm -hmm. a that's kind of a bummer about old usada right you know I, I feel like there's so much that could be done uh for fighters and stuff that they can't do yeah you know it's like this medically stuff it would give you make you healthier it would you know like nad plus you know yeah. you're gonna get to do some but yep. um it's so good for the brain yeah it's and crazy because it's not a it's not steroids not even it's a vitamin it's vitamin why, why yeah. did they why do you think in the ufc they say you can't do ivs because do guys try to mask stuff or that that's my understanding is that if you do a lot of ivs that you can just kind of mask wash out anything and make it make it hard to detect mm -hmm. honestly i don't know anything about uh you know how the ushada works you saw the testing and, yeah. and stuff like stuff like that um you know, we were super excited that they did approve our type of stem cell that we have here uh, for treatments, but, you know, only can be done uh, for an injury and it can only be a direct injection. So the NA, is the NAD a pretty new thing? 
Um, or has it been around for a I while? Think it's, been, it's been around for a minute, but it's definitely caught popularity lately. Uh, a lot of biohackers talking about it a lot and stuff. I'm on an IV NAD uh, right now. I try to do one a week. Damn. Um, and uh, so, yes. That's sweet. Yeah, we found out about this place. I think the Rogan. Yeah. Right here in Eddie Bravo, I think just kind of go off on it. And Tim's shoulder's been messed up for about four months. He hasn't been able to grapple at all. So even before, yeah, before the fight, we had, uh, I think, did you message, how'd you, who'd you contact? Uh, I, I contacted the CPI and said we're interested in On going. Instagram? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And That's then so uh, cool. now we're here. Yeah, right right before the fight, we knew we were coming here. So it's like, all right, just go to war with mm -hmm. Peter, whatever <sighs> the fuck happens. We'll yeah. get healed after. Yeah. So. That's so you awesome. got you're getting injections into your shoulder. Yeah, nervous? I'm pumped. I'm a little bit nervous because they say it's pretty painful, but I mean I've been through plenty of And then you see Mary Soul down there. Yeah. She's just this fifty eight year old. And she's getting it lady in both shoulders. In both shoulders. Yeah. It's awesome. crazy how it affects different people different ways. Ray yeah. Mysteria is down here, it didn't seem to bother his shoulder at all. Uh, you know, one of our friends, Danny, uh, who works with us here, he got his done and his shoulder killed him for a month, you know, yeah. but now he's doing great. He's back surfing, man. And so, you know, part of that is, you know, when, when you get your joints injected, your brain thinks you just had a massive traumatic injury, which you kind of need. You want that healing response there. Right. And so uh, but structurally, nothing's changed. Right. That's the thing you have to remember. Like, I'm not actually this hurt. Uh, my body just thinks that I'm hurt. Yeah. So we add what's called a lysate to the stem cells, which turns them into like a jelly. And so we went and got our MRIs together yesterday. And uh, so the interventional radiologist will look at the MRIs and figure out where to best place those stem cells. And then by turning the stem cells into this, this jelly, it holds them in that place. Right. So the old technology where it's just in a watery type fluid, you know, the joint, your, your, your joints, your shoulder, your knee is such a, a tight, complicated joint. It does not want fluid in it. So it would immediately start pushing the stem cells out with this. It just holds them in place that with our with our cells are very strong, hypoxic cells. And so that that kind of gives it a, a bigger reaction, a bigger healing response, immune response to it, uh, which is good, was, which was what you want. You know, you want those stem cells to stay in place. Place. You know, for your shoulder, you don't want to be lifting it over your head for a while. You want to keep it loose and keep it moving, um, but you want to keep those cells in so there. So, will as it long get inflamed? Possible. It's going to get inflamed. Yeah. So, it'll be a little swollen. Yep. So, uh, what's so when you ice something, you're supposed to help with the swelling, but yeah. with the, but I we're making it swell on purpose, on purpose for the. Yep. Yep. So, you wouldn't want to ice it. Ice no. it. No, so you I wonder, like, let that healing. Is, it's the weirdest thing when I I, I fell on my uh, one wheel electric skateboard uh -huh. and I created two meniscus pair, tear half of my uh, half of my PCL and it, I got stuck up with stem cells. It blew up huge. Uh -huh. It was so weird to look at it and like not ice it. Like yeah. that's what we all we've done yeah. for years. Not ice it. No Tylenol. You know nothing. Just let it heal. Uh, I remember hearing know, Laird way. talk about that in the on the Rogan podcast. I'm like. I, it's it's weird yeah i mean it makes sense but yeah. our whole life growing up playing sports you roll your ankle ice it you yeah. do anything that's swollen ice it but i guess icing it could be preventing it from healing faster but i guess if it hurts super super bad maybe that's when you you need yeah. to yeah what uh so like how does the doctor decide how many stem cells a person needs uh for in a joint yeah you know, so there's some like basic parameters of what, what we use and depending on the size of the person, how many different locations you're going to be getting injected, uh, that determines a lot of the uh, volume. And one thing for joints is, you know, as, as Americans, as green goes, you know, frequently we think more <laughs> is better, you know, yeah. like horsepower on a car. Yeah. Uh, but that's not necessarily always, uh, you know, true in medicine. Uh, and it's, and in this specific situation with stem cells, you know, more as, as far as going into a joint um, is, is not necessarily better. So it dep depends on the size of your uh, shoulders, you know, like Marisol downstairs, you mentioned she's a nice, uh, you know, smaller, more petite woman. Uh, and then, you know, we had guys like Kevin Nash here, you know, his shoulders are just yeah. mm -hmm. ginormous. And so, so that plays a part into it too. What's the most you've ever pumped into a person? At one time? At one time? Yeah. Uh, 360 million for Kevin Nash. Oh, yeah. Holy. Yeah. Jesus. And like someone like me, I'm pretty bigger. Yeah. And I think they, the doctor said they were going to do around 40 million. In your shoulder, you mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So his whole body was 360. So you're going to do 40 million in your shoulder. That's a big dose for a shoulder. Yeah. You know, so like that's at the upper range 
uh, for a shoulder. And then you're doing IV stem cells too, right? Mm-hmm. How much are you doing in the IV? I'm not sure. You're not sure. I'm yeah. Not sure Probably yet. like a hundred to 150. We million, haven't done our blood work you know. uh, results yet, right? No, we haven't had our MRI report our yet. MRI. Yeah. Your MRIs. So it takes a day to get them back. Sweet. Uh, but I would, you're usually during in the afternoon. So your blood work should be back today cool. too. It's yeah. crazy with the stem cells. Not many people, even like my dad, my brother, they're from Montana. They've never really even heard of it. Can't even spell it. <laughs> so, so in the States, there's like a limited amount of stem cells. You were explaining it to me last night. Yeah. So there's types of stem cells, you That's know, right. basically, and those are really good. You know, the stem cells, I've done those stem cell treatments that they have in the U S it's just older technology uh, because the breaks got put on stem cells early on. Uh, for religious reasons in the U.S., all the top stem cell doctors and scientists, they left the U.S. And so now things have come back and it's a lot more is legal and a lot more could be done. There's different stem cells that are going through FDA trials now, but they're all on the older technologies. You know, technology is just moving so fast and the process to get things through the FDA and, and made legal is very slow and very expensive. Um, so there's just a big gap uh, in what's available. So you think eventually, possibly, it'll get to where you can do it in the U.S.? I hope so, you know, definitely. But I think that it will always be behind unless there is a way to speed up the process of Once getting it approved. Once they figure out how to make the, the money. There's no, it's, you know, that's, there's plenty of money already to be yeah. made. I, I, don't, I just think it's the process, really. Yeah. You know, people say, oh, they can't make enough money on it. Well, that's, that's baloney. There's stem cell clinics all over the world that are making a lot, a lot yeah. of money. Um, it's just that that process is, is a slow going process and very expensive to do. Uh, you know, they say for a, for a cancer drug, yeah, you know, something like 50 to a hundred million dollars just to get to phase three, you know, wow. and then you got to recruit the patients and everything else. So it's, it's a process. Sheesh. I bet. It's, you know. oh, yeah. It's crazy. I mean, being in Tijuana, we were talking to Zab deal, the, the driver saying how, <laughs> cheap it is to get a place here cheap oh, yeah. it is to rent a place he said he's renting a place for was it three Six. bedrooms 600 bucks a month right on the beach <laughs> yep i'm like dang and i was looking up houses on the beach so you can get a sweet house Sick for places. 600 500 600 000. oh yeah and that's home. gone up a lot since covid Dude. a lot of gringos moved down here because we didn't really have the same lockdown and yeah. stuff down here is it kind know? of a pain in the butt being a gringo and buying something down here no not yeah. too bad. Uh-uh. You know? Dude, it's not. I mean, we have multiple buildings that we bought down it's here. It's crazy. San Diego's right there. Yeah. You can just drive past the, through the border, no issues. I mean, if. I mean, you didn't get beheaded, right? Mm-hmm. I, yeah, that you was crazy. The first reflexes, time coming to Mexico, so. I just sat there. I forgot through. my passport. Yeah. That's crazy. We just cruised it. It's nothing like you thought it was going to be, right? Yeah. I mean, driving through and looking at the, looking at the houses, that was kind of how I saw it, like pictured it. I was like, damn. Yeah. It's like serious, uh, poor poverty. Poverty. Yeah. I was like, damn, that's made me more grateful. Like instantly, I'm like, holy shit, yeah, that's sure. wild. Yeah, we haven't got to see any of the nicer areas though. Is there some pretty nice areas? Oh too? yeah, there's some super nice areas. I mean, where we had dinner last night it was dark, so you couldn't really see. But like all like those high rises around there, those are all like really nice. They're still not expensive compared. I mean, you say, you know, a $600,000 house on the, on the beach, you go three miles up the beach to San Diego. It's probably 6 million yeah. or 12 million uh, Dude, dollar totally house right there. I see myself live, buying yeah. a house down here. Cause you could still drive across. How long do you think it would take from one of these sweet houses on the beach to get yeah. to a really good gym in, in San Diego, like a good jujitsu gym, 20, 30 minutes. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Victory is like right over there, you know, Jocko and Dean's place. You're oh, probably really? like 45 minutes, something yeah. like that. If you get what's called the century or the global entry pass, uh-huh. it's super fast uh, to drive over. When you guys get taken back by Zab, we have a special medical pass that uh, cuts you to the front of the line. So it doesn't take long oh, to get uh, over the border. The border can get crazy sometimes, you know, yeah. Fridays. Uh, there's a lot of traffic going back and forth. Um, but And if you go a little further down the beach, too, uh, man, there's some serious nice stuff on the wow. on the beach a little further down. Yeah, yeah I'd love to, awesome. love to see those. And there's some houses. gyms around here, too. Yeah. Is there around here, oh, too? There's a lot of jiu-jitsu. There's, there's two different. There's a Carlson Gracie jiu-jitsu school right here oh. uh, in Playa's. And there's a, a, a Henzo one. And then when you go into into uh, TJ, there's a you know a ton of boxing. Um, sure. there's a few different MMA schools, uh, that are down here. Um, you know, there's it's so a weird. lot of jujitsu. We even have a Gracie Baja. Damn. It's, it's so weird. I literally fought like 10 days ago or, or whatever it was. And I'm already like itching 
because I haven't trained since. And I was like, fuck, I need to train. I can't yeah. imagine you four months. Yeah, at, but one, at a certain point, you probably just like, whatever, I can't train. You just got to accept it and not let it like mess with your happiness. But for you, it's like, dude, now we see what's on the horizon. These yeah. next three fights will be so fucking massive. Yeah. It's hard not to just <sighs> want to be focused. Yeah. Dude, it's hard. It's a good mindset to be in. I need to be in the gym. Yeah, because I've been in. Well, my you need to take a little easy on that. That we're doing your knee, right? Yeah, I do my knee. Take it easy on that knee for a little my, while. This knee's been bothering me honestly for probably a couple of years now, and then uh, got stomped a couple times in the fight. So I'm excited to to shoot it up, but uh, I'm excited to get back to work. Is yeah. the Rotolo brothers? How far is their gym or their place? So I believe they're in Orange County. So oh, okay. that's uh, from San Diego. You're probably looking at like an hour and fifteen minutes. So you know, a couple I, hours. To so get they don't there. train at Atos. Uh, that is in Orange County, right? Oh, is it? Yeah. I thought it was in San Diego. Oh, look. Well, well, there's I'm two. Sure. Probably know well, Andre Gavone has a Atos. He's a buddy of mine. He's been down here before. Yeah, where's that one His at? gym's close. You're probably 30 minutes from oh. the border to his gym. <laughs> that's the one they train at. But I at. thought he that, that that is the one they train at? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's close. We want to go. We want to go train with them, learn some, learn yeah. some tricks. They're awesome. Some tips yeah. and tricks. I know those long, kids since boys. eight. Yeah, that's yeah. sweet. We watched them on ADCC. We were watching the online. That was that's super impressive. I thought, impressive. man, uh, was Cade, right? He, that, yeah, I thought he got robbed in that one. Against the like, big guy? Yeah, it's like he had the no, only that submission. Ty. That was Ty. Sorry, Ty. That was sick. Oh, he blocked up submission. that dart. So I was yeah. like, no way. <laughs> I'm like, this is supposed to be submission in wrestling. Only one guy gets a submission and there's attempt yeah. and there's a, and he got was turning purple. You know, it wasn't like some like throw up on pretending to do yeah. a submission. Like that shit was sweet. And that would have been Nicholas Mirgali's first time being submitted as a black belt. And literally the way they were running that absolute division, you were getting five minutes <sighs> and Ty Rutolo, everyone was outsized him by 50, 60 pounds. Yeah. So, how, much, how much does he weigh? Like 170? 90, 95. Oh, he's that big? Yeah. Oh, shit. I mean, I feel like they've gotten quite a bit because they're still young, right? Yeah. Like, like, like they're that's like the weight class he went at. So he could have been lighter. Who oh, knows? Okay. Because I feel like they were like kind of like my size a couple years ago. And now they're just like big. <laughs> well, the Mika Galvo is your size. He's He won the 77 kilograms, which is. How much is 77 kilograms? Do you Times know? Times 2.2. So like 100. 160? Yeah. Something yeah. Like that. Or no. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So that'd be good. Pumped to get back to juice. Yeah. Yeah, so. so didn't one of the brothers fight up a weight class because so they could be in two mm -hmm. different weight classes? Yep. Yeah. And then the Ty Rutolo in the second round had to go against his teammate. No, first round he had to go against Josh Hinger. Yeah. Then he had to go to Lucas Hulk Barbosa. <sighs> yeah. Both of his teammates back to back. Like what That's a, a yeah. shitty draw. Yeah. We're so lucky we get to train with Tank Kino as much as we do. Like he's, yeah, he's a every stud. Monday, Friday it's competition training. Mm. He's been whooping me for six years. Like so lucky. It's improved yeah. my game so much because he's same weight class. It's like that kind of style. The wrestlers, like that's what we've been training for for six years. Just that style. Yeah. And he's the best in the world at it. Hell yeah. He is awesome, man. It's crazy now how much good training there is in the U.S. I used yeah. to ride a bus for an hour and 45 minutes to go train at Half Gracie's Damn. every day. Yep. When it was cold out and it was raining, I couldn't ride. I didn't want to ride my motorcycle because uh, I yeah. get so cold going to train and then trying to warm up. Oh, so I would just take the bus. Fuck. And now it's like, you just, dude, every yeah. single corner's got an awesome black belt on it. You know, literally in Phoenix, everywhere. every mile, there's a pretty decent gym. Yeah, yeah. Have a lot Phoenix of is like a mecca there. too of, for MMA and mm -hmm. some big gyms there. But yeah. that's why we moved down from Montana because Montana, I mean, there's some. There ain't no gyms, but I mean, they're, <laughs> they're they're about twenty years behind up On there. Yeah. yeah, that's good for hunting. That's about it. Yeah, man. hunting and being cold. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. two things you like. You're good. Well, a lot of people have been moving out there too since you know, like California. Everyone's been escaping yeah. California since COVID. I heard a lot of people going out. To Do you Montana. think you'll ever implement cold plunge? Cold. Uh, exposure here, whether well, it's cry, you know, we cool definitely plunge. could. We're like, you know, we're in in the process of uh, doing a, a whole build out and stuff, um, and it could be good for for pre uh, stem cell yeah. treatment, oh, but yeah. we don't want to take the inflammation oh, yeah. we down just talked about that. <laughs> uh, afterwards. I'll tell you one thing that we do have coming that's super cool. Uh, it's called a Hocket, and it's a ozone sauna with a PEMF built into it. So Hocket. you get into this egg thing and you wrap this entire blanket that's a PEMF you guys have been doing the pulse mm -hmm. electromagnetic uh -huh. field right around your whole body and it pressurizes with ozone forcing the oxygen into your uh, skin and it brings your your body temperature up uh, really fast so while your body temperature is coming up you're getting that full magnetic charge across your whole entire Damn. body it is awesome like Hawk if it. you have body pain like it's gonna be great for our cancer patients but just also for you guys like 
basically having telling all of your cells it's putting the energy into the mitochondria of the cell bringing dying cells back to life it's also speeding up cell replication like making your own stem cells by 400 percent combined with hyper oxygenating your body all at the same time the little detox from the body temperature all in there it's it's an awesome experience so what we is, should have that thing here next time you come Sweet. what does one of those run about 50 50 racks yeah long. There's some lesser models. You can get it without the PMF and some other stuff, but we're getting like the, the full-blown the Cadillac tier. Eldorado. <laughs> you know. For the cancer patients and stuff, how do they find your hospital? Is it just uh, like- It's a lot through word of mouth, Facebook, uh, you know, a lot that way. Um, mm -hmm. This hospital has been around for 40 years. Uh, so we purchased it about eight years ago. Um, and it had you know good reputation before that. And we've just really built on a lot of what they've done oh, uh, wow. before that. Uh, and we have a we have a lot of patients who uh, thank God are still you know still alive. So they meet people and they refer people. Um, I don't know if you guys had time to walk around and read any of the writing on the walls from the cancer patients, but uh, some of that writing was from patients that were here like 30, 35 years ago. And Dude. some of those people are still alive. You know, we had a survivor reunion. And we brought back some of our survivors that had been at this hospital before we owned it that were 30 years out, 20 years, 15 years wow. out to speak to new patients, to inspire them wow. and stuff. So, dude, that's fucking awesome. It's, uh, if you get a chance, you know, you talk about gratitude, man, just yeah. take a walk around uh, and read some of the messages from the patients to each other's uh, on the walls. It's, uh, dude, I was already doing that. It's like makes you want to choke up. I know, it's hard crazy. for you. I was like, okay. Oh. Uh, it's just a reminder every day to me, like take advantage because you, yeah. you never know. And it's crazy, like how many more younger and younger people that we're seeing, unfortunately, with cancer. Dude, it's yeah. just so impressive, like especially because your background, you had your jujitsu companies, your websites and all that stuff. And then getting a place like this and trying to put all the pieces together for a business like this is fucking impressive, dude. In another country, in a language you don't speak. Like what? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Hey, man, if, if, if I had a hundred bucks for every person told me we were going to never make it happen, we were going to get kidnapped by the cartels, we were going to this, we are going to that, you yeah. know? But I mean, I credit Ed, you know, Ed Clay for that. He's the visionary. Uh, you know, this a lot of this all really started out for him to take care of his mom and, uh, you know, didn't want his mom to, to pass away and had to look outside the U.S. for treatments that would work for her. And that's what, you know, that's what, that's what we're all here. You know, like if you could get this in Phoenix, you wouldn't be here. Right. You know, and it's the same for the cancer patients and the autoimmune patients. If they could get the care that they needed, either legally or affordably uh, in the United States, then there'd be no reason to be here. But unfortunately with the way things are right now uh, if covid didn't teach us anything it was that our medical system's broken it doesn't work yeah it doesn't work for most people and uh you know hopefully that could be the change you know enough people wake up and say like we are not getting health care you know and uh you know make those demands and so is 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 in LA, is schools back open? Or are they still closed and kids are still? Oh, no. uh, uh, schools are still, uh, as far as I know, all school. I don't have any kids, so schools are back open and stuff. Uh, I did see a thing in San Diego; they were trying to bring back a mask mandate, but I think it got shot down. Damn. Who like? Uh, who so. would even suggest that? It's like, <laughs> like who? Like, who's making that? So those suggestions. Scared people. That's all I can think isn't of. Isn't that they're scared? I mean, they're like slow. I just you know like I, at this point like what's there to. <laughs> yeah. If COVID was going to wipe us all out, we'd be gone by now, right? So I feel like, yeah, for us, COVID was always just kind of because you had your own gym. I had the cage at my house and we, we just it didn't affect us at all. Luckily. Yeah. I mean, our, the I mean, training the was the gym, same, but training was the same. And I shut down my gym for one month of the thing. Yeah. And then after that, I said, hey, let's, let's still train. Just park all the way around the building so there's not a bunch of cars and we'll sneak in the back door. We still had training. Yeah. So it wasn't too I think bad. a lot of places did that. And, and if there was ever a community that it was going to destroy, it would have been us, you know, like right. breathing on each other, everything, yeah. closed rooms, yeah. dirty mats, you yeah. know. So Phoenix was always pretty lenient, though. It was Phoenix never. Was yeah, that you guys bad. had it where you guys were good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I went out there during uh, COVID. We went to. Um, we went to the rich dad, poor dad, and uh, George Gammon. Uh, they had a birthday party for him, uh, uh, Kisaki, for his birthday party out there. And like we got there, and like we had been in lockdown, complete lockdown. And, like we're in this bar, Phoenix it's lit. packed, everyone's <laughs> drinking, Bargain. no one's wearing a mask. I'm like, oh, there's some normality in yeah. this crazy world. Yeah. We've been locked up for like three months, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. 
Well, it was, uh, you guys had it a lot better off. You know, yeah. down here, we didn't really do much in Mexico. You know, the president was like, what am I going to tell people to like stay at home and starve? You know, like people got to go out and work and things. So there wasn't too, it wasn't too crazy lockdown. It was for like a short minute, but then it, when it, it first happened. Yeah. When it first happened and it opened back up. So Mexico is so crazy being here because I watched just El Chapo. So I just have like, I just think it's cartel. Yeah. <laughs> then you get here, it's like, oh. I wonder what, I can't imagine what the jails are like here. Yeah, I don't want to find out. Yeah, just, I mean, are they I, just I'll hood? drop you off if you want. <laughs> I feel like every time we went anywhere, there's been cop lights on. I feel like are they Yeah, they just drive just around on? with their lights on like That's that. A, it's the same in Brazil. When I first moved to okay, Brazil, I was like, sense. I kept thinking I was getting pulled over, but they just drive around with their lights on. I mean, on. it probably it's helps like, with look crime at me, Look shit. at me, you know, I don't know if it's yeah. that or what it is, but yeah, they always got their lights on and there's a lot of cops around, but you know, it's just, I don't know. I've been here for eight years, man. You know, I drive a nice car yeah. down here. Haven't had any issues. I, um, you know, no problems. You know, there's a lot of Americans that work here with us. There's a lot, a lot of just Americans that live around here. I don't yeah. know if you've been looking at license plates, but California. there's more California plates than there are, you know, Mexico yeah. plates. So, and gas is like three bucks a gallon cheaper here right really? now. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, dude, it's almost like a little hack if you want to live in San Diego. Just a lot of people do it. You could be like, well off and then you 20 minutes you can be rich as fuck <laughs> yeah yeah that's crazy food's cheaper i mean i had a very affordable amazing dinner last night and uh you know my the condo that we live in is in a really nice high-rise building it's a great condo place and uh it's uh thirty three hundred dollars a month four bedrooms five baths pretty luxury pool you know yeah gym everything right there in it on the top of the hill i got amazing view i see all the way to california you know it's because it's San Diego, when we drive by and there's buildings just like right, is that San Diego like on the other side of the wall? Yeah, right. So the, some there's, of the buildings back right up to the wall. Oh, yeah, that's so yeah. crazy. A lot more on the Mexico side, like on down here where we are in Playa is not in in uh, in Tijuana when uh -huh. we drove drove through Tijuana. So we're not. Um, that's a military base right there. So right now uh -huh. we're not technically in the city of Tijuana. No, oh, we're, okay. we're in what's called beaches of Tijuana, Playas. Mm. Uh, so we're you know, about 20, 30 minutes outside of the city. But where I, the hotel is, is like right in what's called the restaurant district of, uh, of Tijuana. Dude, I could definitely see us buying a little something, something on the beach right here. Yeah, it's cheap. for sure. My, my wife's from Mexico, Oaxaca, but she, because uh, of her, her um, passport, she can leave, but she can't like go back into the States. So mm. we've never got to like go to Mexico. So this is our, this is our first time. Yeah sweet so far mm -hmm. that's good and we had some good tacos dude best tacos i've ever had yeah, yeah. Those were <laughs> easily soaked in that bone broth yeah buddy next place we're going to is hong kong in asia <laughs> what are you laughing at a little chinese food i'm serious get some chinese food flight yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah man no. asia's another crazy place man for sure we've we've there yeah, we've never been we'd like to go there too i'd like to go to thailand japan and tokyo would be cool it'd be it's, super, it's cool. super cool it's fun what's a flight like and you that? skate right no oh, okay no. i thought you said you skated he, he acts like he can sometimes yeah. did for a while tokyo is a great place to skate have really fun. skateboard yeah like they have skate parks nah just a street skate they might have skate parks so i just street skate you know Dang, i just yeah. want to look like a character like an anime yeah. character like oh, throw my hair over and there. walk around like they're like ah. yep they're gonna love it even just me being like super white guy like i have people come up and take pictures with me <laughs> just because really? you're white oh, yeah. <laughs> especially when i was in china so I, I worked in and out of china for eight years doing manufacturing you know and uh man i go out to where some of those factories were at uh -huh. and like i just like walk in places and some people be like <gasps> you know like whoa God, imagine silver know. fox yeah. my hair is just crazy. <laughs> it wasn't silver then but yeah <laughs> crazy White. color hair orange hair tattoos yeah. we look like characters over there they always say yeah. the asian women really like white men but i don't I'm yeah, we'll not, see. Not here, I guess. Yeah, well, we're well, in Well, Japan, Mexico. they frown a lot more on the tattoos. Really? Yeah. They huh. definitely, they're not. Yeah, Abu Dhabi when things. we were there. Not a lot yeah, of people not, had tattoos not either. Not a big fan over there either, yeah. Yeah, they'll, some places will actually ask you to cover them before you come in the restaurant. In, in, what? In Tokyo. Really? And uh, and there's, there's we were told um, <laughs> if there's not an English sign on the restaurant outside, you're not allowed to eat in there. It's so, racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. That's uh, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Huh. We'll definitely have but to. But still plan worth trip. going. 
Yeah, we awesome. I definitely yeah. like plan a trip. Hong but. Kong is one of my favorite cities in the whole world. Hong Had some Kong. amazing times there because it's um it's right outside where like the largest cl like clothing manufacturing and stuff is. So they have tons and tons of models there. Oh. And the models there, they're not uh for like runway, they're for fit models. Oh. So they have to have perfect bodies. And mm. so there's like whole areas where like there are models from all over the world, you know. They also have a large uh, Brazilian population over there. So I went to a couple of different um, jujitsu schools uh, over there. Do they uh, speak that English? Was really most cool. people. Yeah, a lot of people That's speak so English. Crazy. We're and, the only uh, place. That and a lot of Portuguese. When I was yeah. in when I was in China, actually, there's there a lot of people that were spe spoke Portuguese. Um, over there but yeah hong kong man, it's a good party town good food and a great kong shopping clubs would be cool you know hong kong clubs would be sweet mm -hmm. yeah. is the do do a lot of people in mexico speak english or oh yeah around here everybody. so america is just stupid We're we just only so, speak yeah. english not me i got five languages under my Dude, belt really? but, most, you know, americans. <laughs> <laughs> most americans but i didn't grow up in america too well, so when you, did you just learn yeah. portuguese just through training Pretty much. Well, I got when I moved to Brazil, you know, like I got a tutor, and so I had a tutor. Smart. I had to go through a couple of them though because they kept trying to sleep with me. I hate and when that so, happens. Yeah, you know, hey, I'm trying to learn Portuguese. There's plenty of girls in Brazil. Trust so you me. fired them, yeah, and so I had to cut them from the team after and, uh, shares them. But uh, you know, you, I got down there. I first went down there in '99, and um, just not a lot of Americans there, you know. So you would at the mall, I would always find kids that look like they're in like middle school or high school because they're learning English, mm. and I would help them get me to translate. And I'm sure it's gotten a lot, you know, a lot better. But it's just like you know, I literally walk around down there, and people would be like, "What? Like, who, where are you from?" They you say that's the I best mean? way to learn a language, though, just to merge yourself. Like when you into have it. to do it, like the, when I when I got my first girlfriend that spoke no English, that's what really like. Damn, that's you're hot. sitting there with a, you know, we didn't have iPhones. You're sitting yeah. there with your dictionary trying to make a sentence you know like you are beautiful okay yes yeah, so, thank you that. <laughs> you know that type of thing i guess they have those new headphones out now that literally translate it right i to heard about ears. that yeah that'd yeah. be pretty sweet yeah you're not yeah. even gonna have to learn another language yeah just put those bad boys pretty soon on. elon will just implant one in this <sighs> so have you have you always been kind of entrepreneur type guy or yeah definitely. always even when you're training jujitsu and yeah well i you know um, so before I was getting into ju well, I started, I was snowboarding. I was pro snowboarder, but I got hurt pretty bad. Uh, I overshot a jump, dropped my intestines through my stomach wall. <laughs> and then, um, so I had to pull back from snowboarding for, for a while. And, uh, I was, I was working at a job, a high tech job doing sales. And I met this guy that raced motorcycles. So I bought a racing motorcycle and I was starting to try to race some uh, street bikes, but it's expensive, man. You know, you're spending a thousand bucks on tires every yeah. other race. And I asked the guy, I said, I go, how do you afford this? And he's like, oh, I have my own company. I make a couple parts. And then I, everything I spend on racing, I, I write off as a sponsorship deal. And I was like, huh and then that, that was like just when i had first started like getting into uh you know jujitsu and um i just kind of like decided man i'd rather do jujitsu than race motorcycles yeah. and i said well if i'm going to do this is going to be my new thing like i need to create a business i got to follow this guy's model you know so that's uh uh one of my old training partners and my partner uh, is, uh his name's alan marquez gumby as he's known uh we started on the mat.com uh, went live in 96. Dang. Uh, I think we're the, we're the second, uh, we're the oldest one running, but we're the second like jujitsu, uh, website up on the internet. Uh, we we're the first ones to host downloadable videos that were 120 by 140 pixels big. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. And you used to have to like set it to download overnight, Holy. you know? And my brother who Cade, who's a, a black belt under Eddie Bravo, he worked for a server company. So I had like free, free bandwidth. So like nobody could afford to have downloadable videos, but because he ran the servers. So, you know, a lot of the uh, first jujitsu videos, first Valley Tudo videos that were ever available on the internet were on my site, you know, no YouTube back then. And, uh, you know, just grew into that. I had some business stuff before that, but, uh, you know, that was, uh, and then the, the economy crashed and the tech world. And I was just like, man, I'm going to try to make this jujitsu company work. And, uh, that's how it all started. That's pretty crazy, yeah. man. Imagine right when the internet came out, if you would have bought just some of those big domain names, oh, yeah, just I know for a hundred bucks. And I know man, domain names are like a seven bucks, nine bucks each back yeah. in the day. Yeah. Like, uh, 
like big one like Chevrolet mm-hmm. or Chevy.com Google. or Ford.com. Mm-hmm. You could probably resell those for fat, huh? Well, there's a lot of people that did that. Domain really? squatting, it was called. Yeah. yeah. Dang. A lot of people had that foresight. Damn, that's pretty cool. So, Heck yeah. Now you got to pick up your uh, entrepreneur game here, man. Yeah, I mean, I've, I feel like I've always been kind of an entrepreneur. Um, the Sugar Merch w- was kind of the... I've been doing merch since I was 16, 17 years old. Each fight, coming yeah. out with some shitty shirts and selling them. Now we're doing... You know, I did over a million dollars last year, over a million dollars this year in, in merch alone. So that, that's been fun. Been buying houses in Arizona. Yeah. Um, and then I've got a bunch of brand deals that I'm, I'm currently in and, and always working on them. I have a guy named Emron that uh, I do. He's like my business advisor and, you know, jumping on calls with him pretty much every day. That's great. And uh, it's so fun. I, I do enjoy that that part of this a lot as the entrepreneur. Even Tim, I feel like he got the bug too a little bit. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Kind of, probably kind of through you even. I yeah. mean, starting my gym and I'm about to open up my second gym and just kind of, I mean, not competing. I'm like, I got to put my energy somewhere, yeah. especially when I get, every time I get an injury, I'm like, this is a perfect time to just put my energy somewhere yeah. else. Right. But then when I'm healthy, I'm like, I'm wanting to train for tournaments and shit. And grinding on a pod. We've been doing the pod for like f- five years and uh, I feel like something big is going to come out of that. Yeah. We've slowly been getting bigger and bigger. I, f- I feel like it'd be hard, but I think we could do it. The live podcast, a yeah. little, little audience, a little bit of, you know, our little audience out there and just slowly kind of build that. That'd be super cool. But I think, I feel like you'd, it, it'd have to be a comedic one, like a comedic episode, like a good giggles, but it's hard to be funny on per like intentionally. I feel like our humor is more just like random, which yeah. I guess you could kind of, I think play. we could do it. I mean, that guy, that guy again from in Phoenix, the comedy store guy hit me up, said, let me know when you guys want to do a live Ooh, show. Shit. But like, fuck, I don't know. That'd be great. That'd I think you guys do it for sure. That'd be hard. Yeah. I think, we, I think we have a perfect audience. Yeah. Like the Jobins, the perfect audience. I would, they would love to it. Even if it's like 50 people first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We started the podcast literally just in my extra room on a Logitech, shared a mic for a while yep. and then just slowly built up. Now we have the podcast studio in the back of my gym. Cool. It's pretty sick. You'll have to come out sometimes. Yeah, definitely yeah. Come, out. come out to yeah, Phoenix. For sure. Come out to Phoenix. Peoria. Yeah. We're out in Peoria. It's like away from, it's probably about 45 minutes away from Scottsdale. So it's mm-hmm. like, I, I live in Westside Peoria, which is like an older folks kind of place mm. on purpose because yeah. being around the, the chicks in Tempe and Phoenix. I mean, Too if you've been out uh, there, it's, I, I live there. I know what it's like. It's especially hard like, to focus dude. now. Yeah. People want to give sh- always sugar tables, yeah, table, bottles, bottles and, of and money. Yeah, it's like, like, fuck, I, we gotta no. stay away. <laughs> he lives out in Waddell, which is like another even further from Scottsdale. So we live far away from the fun on purpose, and it's uh, it's nice. It's where we need to be. Yeah, you scare some old people out there. No, I mean. They like me out there. I'm, <laughs> ever since I had a kid, I've ca- I felt like I've calmed down a lot. Well, more so even the, the older she gets, she turns two in a couple couple days. Wow. So I feel like she's definitely calmed me down a lot, which is like when we had her, she was an accident, but I felt like some something was looking out like you need to have a baby. Yeah, It was right when I was starting to make a lot of money, starting to become more famous. And it was like, whoa, 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 here's a baby chill out Pump this those is crazy brakes, yeah. mm-hmm. that's good yeah i definitely want to come out there i'll bring my electric mountain bike out there and rip it up dude i still never rode fun. one of those things we had some crazy trails behind yeah. my house bet. yeah yeah some sweet trails Suron, you should check them out man they're awesome yeah yeah so that, that's I like got three can, of them you pedal and then it just go <laughs> like you just this one you could do pedal or you could just have pegs like a motorcycle and that's Damn. how i have it set up but it's like it's under 100 pounds it's it's like a hybrid dirt bike a, electric mountain bike but that's a hell of a workout and, um, just um, <laughs> it's you know it's like you, you don't really need to like you can get a good workout on it it's just like riding a, like yeah. a dirt bike man yeah. it's a workout um but we, we ride them a lot in the tunnels under Las Vegas, and that is super fun. It's like playing a video game. Damn. Man. What you kind got of all this graffiti there? going, but they're drainage tunnels. It's don't go and, when it rains. Uh, they have, no, it's even more fun when it rains, actually. <laughs> you just rip under there. They just rip under there. They got like these huge banks that you can ride up of, Damn. and like these jumps you can take and drops and stuff. And, and there's one that's, uh, it's 3.2 miles. Uh, underground and it connects what? the M casino uh, to what's the other one right there uh, not Palace Station 
uh, what's the one where they have all the rodeos? It's right, right, right over there, South Point. It's and it's and it's all it's pitch black underground. You can ride. So you just like, have a light on your. Just have bike. a light on the bike. You uh, can do about 40, 45 through there, ooh. and there's graffiti on the sides, and it's just like it's like you're. Uh, on is there the, homeless people? It's under like there? you're on the Tron motorcycle. Sometimes some areas you kind of know exactly. They're not like deep in the tunnels. They're usually oh, by uh, the entrances. Tents but they're always shit. cool. I just bring them some water. Say what's up. Yeah. I never had any problems with them. You don't bug them they don't bother you yeah i bet mean, that's like um, a movie under there but I know. it's uh it's super fun like you hit these big like 40 foot banks like cement <laughs> banks and cruise on them and especially if a little rip know. to it but that's fun. Yeah, little little vegas mush. is sweet oh yeah we, we always we always enjoy vegas i think i yeah. fought there 10 times which is crazy to think about 10 times in yeah. the ufc yeah 10 times in the ufc in vegas where are you fighting mostly before UFC? Um, fought in Montana a lot, amateur. Yeah. My first three or four, five fights were in Montana. Then I fought in uh, Phoenix a couple times. North Dakota, North Seattle, Dakota, yeah. Washington. So just for different smaller uh, yeah. leagues, yeah. yeah. Just trying to get to the UFC, just trying to build sure. that record, build that record, and then, yeah. then boom, explode onto the scene. And when was how, the first time you saw? Scout- how did you get scouted to be in the UFC? Um, Right before I got on the Contender Series, I had uh, uh-huh. this crazy knockout, um, David Nuzo and LFA in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. It was just like this viral epic knockout yeah. where I head kicked him this way and then spun right after and knocked him out and yep, flatlined remember that him. one. Yeah. So uh, that was when they asked me to go on the Contender Series, which was the first season, second episode, so second week. And then I went out there and knocked out Alfred mm-hmm. and oh. Snoop Dogg went crazy. That was yeah. a tough fight too, because I mean he was vegan for that fight. Walking into the cage that Bro. night, he was 138 pounds, and after Fuck. the first round, completely fucking gassed. Yeah. Against a tough. No, no, no. was it? It ended in the first. Yeah, I mean first but two I, minutes. Yeah, I had a, I had gotten a concussion like a couple weeks prior to that fight, Ooh. and like I was, I remember waking up in the middle of like puking, just had a horrible weight cut, horrible fight camp. Everything about that was just bad. Went into the fight with the same confidence. Like looking back on it, I'm like, "Thank God I was delusional. <laughs> like, <laughs> thank God I was as confident as I was because I was like, I'm gonna knock this dude out." And the dude was eight and three, eight KOs, shredded dude from Kis- somewhere in Russia, right, or Kyrgyzstan or mm. wherever. And uh, like, it was a tough, tough fight. Just hit him on the chin enough, and he fell. But yeah, and Snoop Dogg was commentating, so he went. Just that was at LFA. Snoop, this one was, was the contender like series. Okay, yeah, yeah, Snoop was going crazy, and that's what kind of blew up, started blowing up my social media, and that's when I started being like, "Oh, that was kind of fun getting followers and likes and stuff." Yeah. So that was all. It's funny how it's all worked out just so perfectly. It's crazy. Yeah, it is it. fucking crazy. That is cool. I think you were saying like I think LFA was the first. First time, time you saw I my saw fight? fight, yeah, damn. Because uh, Ed Suarez has been like an old yeah. friend for. He's actually come down here, got stem cells too and um so he's always sending me stuff and i've followed them and and, and mark beery is a good old friend of mine as well too so I always damn when was that lfa done. fight that was 2007 no 16 starting to feel old yet not yet <sighs> good <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i i feel i feel when did you start feeling old your oh, body uh, back surgery man after that yeah back surgery Fuck. just changed everything all my friends will tell you there's scott pre-back surgery scott post-back surgery dang i mean I, i'd given up that i was going to be cripple you know mm-hmm. i really had the stem cells like literally magic saved my life you know i had given up on being able to do my, i didn't i couldn't even wear a backpack i couldn't even walk downstairs like a normal person you know like we doing pain pills at that time just to get through life I, I did a lot of pain pills uh, post surgery, but I kind of just came to a point where it's like they kind of stopped working and just like, and so I was just was grunting out the pain. And that PEMF machine was a lifesaver for me because when you have nerve pain, it like puts energy down the nerve and it does what's called straightening the nerve, which, and it, it takes the pain away. Um, but for me, I would always aggravate it and it would come back. Uh, but I used to literally take that PMF home every night after work here at the hospital and I would use it for like a half hour, an hour to take the pain away so I could uh, sleep good. I'd get up in the morning, I'd do a little bit and then I'd bring it back early to the hospital for the cancer patient. That same one. 
uh, the same one every day. I Dang. would just take that thing back and forth, back and forth. And it does miracles for pain for our, our cancer patients too, because you know, one of the biggest problems with cancer is if your organs start failing and liver is one that frequently so you know cancer patients tend to have a lot of pain and so you know what's the go-to in the u.s load them up on opiates which is going to shut down Killer your liver inside. so it's like you're kind of you know it's not really a good idea so we use that for a lot uh, we use cannabis a lot for pain too um, but it's incredible what just 20 minutes of that pulse electromagnetic field can do for your pain levels. So one of those, like one of those is probably 20 racks, you think? For the smaller one we have is 20. The bigger one's about 30, 35. Yeah. Um, do they have like smaller ones for around five grand that would be pretty good? You, or Yes. And you know what? You can, you find them frequently on eBay with low hours on them, inexpensive. Um, but the thing is, is like how much of an electrical pulse it's putting in there. So there are some, there's some matte ones that you can get that are inexpensive, but they're not getting deep into the mm -hmm. body. Like, the, like, you know, that thing, if you turn it up, it Fuck, hits you. Bro. I had the thing on it low and I was tapping out. I was you know, like, it'll hit you. Um, and you, and the more you do it, the more that the more you get used to it and the more that, uh, you can take. But I mean, you know, there's a lot of stuff like that, you know, like, and like, like concussions, you know, it's like, why, you know, I feel like the sport is really missing a lot on taking care of the athletes and, and you know, things that could be doing like every gym should have a PEMF, you know, yeah. if they can afford it. Uh, you know, you were talking about getting your own chamber, Yeah, you know, like the fact that we don't have, you know, good treatment. We talked to Ian a lot about this, you know, it's just like, oh yeah, you got knocked out. Okay. Well, what do I do? Yeah. I don't sleep tonight, but yeah, other than that, that's gotta, it. Athletes should know, take it into their own hands. Yeah. I wonder if, like, if someone talked to Duncan about getting a deal down here with for fighters. He, right he after said the he's talking. He's talking to UFC, right? You said that. Oh yeah, we're so yeah. They're we're they're going to be sending a lot of people down here. Sweet, you know they've been. We you know we've done some good. There's been a bunch of guys that have come down here, had good results and stuff. Because um, bro, you see it all the time in UFC. Pete guys get knocked out. Boom. And then later they're at the club drinking, just like sucking down beers, oh, yeah. just like. Or in like, practice, or back oh, in practice a couple of days yeah. later. Kamar you know, Usman said he had zero head like headaches or anything, which is just, I mean, everyone's different for sure. But for me, I've had slight headaches randomly kind of come and go from, from the Peter fight, nothing too crazy. But I mean, I didn't get knocked out. Kamar got knocked out. Yeah. Oh, Maybe that was better. <laughs> well, we have a chance to save a lot of fights. You know, if a guy early on in his training camp, you know, messes up a joint and can come down here and, and do, doesn't need to do a big dose, but yeah. a, a light dose of cells and take a little bit of time off. You know, uh, when Rafael Lovato came down here, his shoulder was jacked. He couldn't lift it over his head. Seven days later, he was, I haven't had this range of motion in four years. Damn. And three weeks later, he went and fought jujitsu and won Masters Worlds. Jeez. You know, and he's like, I could never have done that without getting the cells. So it's badass. It's, it's a good thing for them, too. Yeah. You know, we're so close to Vegas. You know, you can literally be here in an hour and a half, plane yeah. ride and, and drive. Yeah. And, uh, you know, get, get your cells, take a week off and be back into training. I mean, it could seriously save a lot of, a lot of fights. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay, throw some hyperbaric in there. I'm so excited we yeah, found boom. this place. Yeah. Me too. Definitely. Yeah, you guys are pretty first close time, too. Like what, about an hour from 50 Phoenix? minutes. 50 minute flight. 50 minutes. Yeah, yeah it's quick. It's the drive from the well, you, hotel's super short. Yeah, you, know? you guys make it so easy. You yeah. literally fly in. The airport or the hotel's five minutes from the airport. Yep. You wake up, you go to the lobby. Our boy Z picked us up. Mm -hmm. Or well, he picked us up and then we drive. Yeah. <laughs> Team fucked that we up. We figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> then we're here and 30 minutes and yeah it's, you guys have made it so you guys got it down to where yeah. it's just convenient you don't got to think too much which is nice i don't like doing that mm. boom yeah just try to get you in easy take good care of you and get Do you, you take back out everyone there. out monday nights usually i try to when yeah. i'm in town yeah, yeah man that's really, i like that was really to take cool. everybody out. i like to you know I, I, I try to come down and meet all the patients cancer and the stem cell patients and yeah see what's going on you know and just always looking to improve you know yeah so it's, like, it's cool meeting just like you know? random people just like all around the world from all around and mm -hmm. their stories and yeah some it's, people it's like hardly can walk i'm like damn yeah. that dude's in pain oh yeah we get a lot of that man damn. A lot of that. and then if you go one floor up man to the 
to the cancer floor is like that's where you you know I, I spent a lot of time at. there yeah and, i know uh, yeah that's what tim was saying we should go up and say yeah, what's we'll up to up him on, and on thursday you guys should come to my power of the mind class and okay. what time and uh, that it'll be at uh 1 30 because our flight's yeah. thursday i don't know remember oh you guys will leave it on thursday yeah, yeah. what time do you guys leave I'm not 100 sure. I think it's a. Well, little, we'll figure it out if you can make yeah. it. Or maybe it's my know, daughter's birthday we'll Thursday, up. so I was. Trying oh yeah, you got to get, get home. Yeah. That's important for sure. Maybe I, we think today or tomorrow we could pull up and say hi to them. We can go up there today, yeah, for Sweet. sure, and just say hi, yeah. Sweet, oh yeah, great. I'm pumped for that it. hyper hyperbaric yeah. chamber. I've always wanted to do it. I've never never got to. So it's a one hour sit in there. <laughs> You breathe got it. huff it up yeah Damn, do, do you your get, wim hof i swear to god i do all my wim yeah. hof breathing while i'm in there i, I mean that probably and, helps uh, helps everything yeah oh the, yeah breathing yeah. deeper you're gonna get do you get do you feel high when you get out of there kind of if you're if you're really doing it you know breathing it yeah a, a, a lot of people fall asleep you start really doing those deep breaths uh, do your best but if you're tired and you want you know your body wants to sleep maybe yeah. you were just telling me just, the importance of sleep yeah yeah get your sleep you we know? just took a nap and had so, a coffee so i'm gonna try to really get into you it know, get in breath. there breathe i feel great when i get out of yeah. that thing and you guys are gonna do three back to back you know each Damn. day let's go um and that's uh that's Powerful. a lot of oxygen into the brain you know it's really really good <laughs> for you dude. hell yeah i'm yeah. excited to do that so, heck yeah cool well, guys, it's great to have you on, man. I appreciate you taking some time off. We'll get you in that uh, hyperbaric right now. And uh, let me know when I can come out to Phoenix, man. Dude. I'm down to bring my bike. I'll bring two of you guys. We'll go yeah. riding. Dude, yeah. hell yeah. Right, yeah. After, right, right sure. when we got off, I mean, right when we met, you could tell we could yeah. get, we'd get along with you pretty good. Thanks yeah. for taking good. care of us. Yes, yeah, Scott, yeah of course. You yeah, you guys it. are good people and uh, appreciate it. You man, bro. Oh, man. Yeah.